So those were the informal charges that we saw in the previous video. The formal charges against Socrates were twofold. One was corrupting the youth. And the second one was not believing in the gods of the state. And although those aren't charges that could get somebody convicted today, they were taken very seriously in Athens and ancient Greek, Greece. So consider the first one, the charge of corrupting youth. Socrates responds to this charge with an analogy with horses, and I'll let you read that portion on your own, but I want to focus in on the second argument. And there, Socrates says, look, at my age, I'm 70 years old, I know some things, I've learned some things, and one of the things I've learned is that to live with good people is much better than to live with people who are corrupt. Don't you agree, he says to Miletus. Miletus is basically the prosecuting attorney here. And Miletus says, of course. And Socrates says, so, if I know that it's better to live with good people than corrupt people, I would never corrupt the youth intentionally. If I did that, I'm ending up with wicked people and they're going to harm me. So if I corrupt the youth, I do it unintentionally. So either I don't correct the youth at all, and there shouldn't be any penalty, or I correct the youth, but unintentionally, and there shouldn't be any, any penalty. Because in that system, intent, motives, are relevant, just like in our system today. If you uh, kill someone in anger, at just an angry outburst, that's one thing. If you plot it out and plan it over weeks of time, that's another thing. If you do it by a complete accident, that's still another thing. Intent is relevant to your punishment. That's the way it was then as well. And if you don't intend to corrupt you, then you shouldn't be punished, as Socrates argued. Okay, on to the second charge, which was not believing in the gods of the state. Now, a little background. When Miletus provided his deposition, which got Socrates on trial to begin with, he described Socrates as crazy in a way because he said that he... He believed in these demigods, these offspring of gods, that would follow him around and tell him what to do. Socrates actually talks about these demigods, or one in particular, although it didn't tell him what to do, it told him what not to do. So Socrates elsewhere talks about going into politics, but then this voice, this spirit, this offspring of the gods says, no, don't do that. So Socrates asked Miletus, if the charge was not believing in the gods of the state, or was it not believing in any gods whatsoever? Now, Miletus saw this as an opportunity to make Socrates look even worse. If he didn't believe in any gods whatsoever, that would be terrible in the eyes of the jury. So, Miletus says, not believing in any gods whatsoever. And then Socrates points out the hypocrisy or the contradictions with Miletus and what he said on the one hand, that he believed in demigods, offspring of gods, and on the other hand, that he didn't believe in gods at all. It's like believing in babies, but not adult humans. It just doesn't make any sense. So that's Socrates' defense against the formal charge. 